prejudice comes in many shapes and forms. And being discriminated against is a universal experience. It makes no difference whether the discrimination is racial, nationalistic, or religious, because it always inflicts the same pain. The pain of being harassed, oppressed, or deprived from human rights, or worse, being frivolously arrested, imprisoned, tortured, or even executed. So if you have the misfortune of being discriminated against, whether because of being a black or a Native American in the United States, or a follower of the Baha'i faith in Iran, or a non-Arab native of Somalia, or from the untouchable caste in India, you are sharing in a common form of human suffering. I have experienced discrimination in my own life, and I've made it my life's purpose to work toward a more just and peaceful world. My name is Roya Akavan, and I'm a professor of mass communication at St. Cloud State University. I'm here in the capital of our great nation, founded as one nation under God, with justice and equality for all to engage in an open and truthful conversation with you about our continuing struggle for social justice. Because if we are going to achieve these ideals, we must engage in a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about them. Looking around the buildings in Washington, D.C., I think about how so many of these buildings stand as silent testimonies to the human struggle for equality and justice. They represent both the darkest and the brightest times in our history. They remind us of how far we have come, but how far we still need to go. I've decided to visit three of the buildings that remind us about that history. The National Museum of the American Indian, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the Holocaust Museum. Seeing the artifacts of human cruelty on display in these museums is horrifying. What hits us immediately in the face is the mayhem and destruction that has filled our history. Shockingly enough, we continue to see the same kind of brutal images in the news every day. So the question becomes, has the struggle for justice and equality been all in vain? I have come to believe that there is another dimension to this story, one that is less visible to the naked eye. Historical evidence shows that parallel to the destructive process, there has been another equally real process unfolding. And that is a process of integration and construction. The constructive process is a reality that has been moving forward in the world alongside the destructive process. And in fact, it has been energized by every bloody attempt to block its progress. This can be traced in the gradual awakening of a global collective consciousness during the last 200 years. It is reflected in many different positive trends, including the establishment of regional and global systems 
for example, the European Union and the United Nations, and also the establishment of the World Court and the International Criminal Court, which together enforce a growing body of international law. This court has an important mandate. One of the particularly important constructive trends that began in the 19th century was an awareness of equality of rights for all human beings. The number of laws which were enacted against slavery increased exponentially in the 19th century. And in the 20th century, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted. There are many similar transformations that began in the 19th century throughout the world. The most tangible for us in this country being the challenge to slavery that led to the American Civil War. The outcome of that war taught us an important lesson. It showed us that even in the 19th century, people who were willing to sacrifice their lives to uphold justice had greater strength than the people who clung to a perverse system of wealth and power built on the back of slaves. As we all know, while the legal changes against slavery stopped the most egregious form of oppression, it did very little to eliminate racism from people's hearts. With every new challenge, the destructive process responded with lynching, systematic segregation, and Jim Crow laws. But it was these reactions that energized the civil rights movement and resulted in a major leap forward in the constructive process. Within decades, the forward march of this constructive process made it possible for the people in the United States to elect an African-American president for the first time, and for him and his family to live in a house that was built by slaves. The current destructive reactions to this forward movement have once again brought us to a new stage in the constructive process. Many deep-rooted and festering racial issues, including institutionalized racism and mass incarceration, have bubbled to the surface and are being discussed openly for the first time. Clearly, the struggle for racial justice is unfinished. But the constructive process has put the spotlight on the hideousness of racial injustice and has delegitimized it. This has happened gradually, and it often goes unnoticed by the people who are most affected by it, perhaps because of the utterly exhausting pain of being discriminated against. You may ask, how did the course of human history go so wrong? And why do we still have to deal with it in the 21st century? In fact, at times it may seem that progress has been lost or that conditions have worsened. This tendency, which creates anger and despair, makes it all the more important to understand the robustness of the constructive process and the fact that it is indeed moving forward unhindered on its own plane. While it may not seem like it, the light of love and justice is finally succeeding in driving out the darkness of hate and discrimination. In fact, the growing visibility of the destructive process in the world today is the result of the forceful challenge posed to it by the constructive process. This growing challenge has caused those old and destructive mindsets to resurface in the most extremist form in a last stand. Even though these reactionary movements represent the last gasps of a dying order, they can still cause a lot of human suffering. So the question becomes, what can we do about this suffering? 
How can we go about becoming constructive catalysts and build model communities that reflect our ideals of unity, equality, and justice? I believe, as I'm sure many of you do, that the solution to a more just and peaceful world has always been there, right in front of our eyes. Every faith tradition has been unified in presenting us with this most practical of solutions. Treat others as you wish to be treated. Perhaps treating others as we wish to be treated would become much easier if we did not see people as the other, but as part of one single interconnected body called humanity, and understood that when one part of the body is hurting, in practice, the whole body is afflicted. It is becoming increasingly clear that the oneness of humanity is not just a philosophical theory or a spiritual concept. Today, science tells us that there is only one race, and that is the human race. An equally important cutting-edge scientific research has discovered that contrary to previous assumptions, human beings are not aggressive by nature, but rather we have survived as a species precisely because of our capacity for altruism and cooperation. The desire for heart-to-heart -heart connection and collaboration is as much part of our DNA as the desire for supremacy seeking and conflict. The constructive spirit of the 21st century is most clearly reflected in the younger generation as the most globally connected and socially conscious generation in history, the majority of young people around the world consider themselves as world citizens. They're concerned about others and understand the shared destiny of humanity. They care about the planet. They're searching for a noble purpose. And they're eager to participate in building a better world. If we want a world free of prejudice and discrimination, our highest priority should be to empower our young people to act on their vision of a more just and peaceful world. Even as flowers grow and blend together side by side Show. Sure.